Magandang araw! Welcome back to another learning episode in general mathematics here on Learn with Sir Jerry. In this episode, we will talk about piecewise function and how to represent real-life situations using piecewise functions. To start, let's define first a piecewise function. What is a piecewise function? A piecewise function is a function where more than one formula or functions are used to define the output. Kaya ito tinatawag na piecewise function kasi ito ay binubuo ng iba't ibang functions o pieces of functions for each part of the domain. Bawat function o formula ay may sariling domain na isinusulat in forms of intervals. Ano ba ang interval? An interval refers to all numbers between two given numbers. For example, x is greater than 3. Ibig sabihin nito, ang value ng ating domain o ni x can be any number greater than 3. So we can have 4, 5, 6, 7, or even 3.1 as long as mas mataas ito sa 3. Next, x is less than 4 but greater than 1. Ang ibig sabihin naman nito, ang value ng domain ay any number between 1 and 4. Paano isinusulat ang isang piecewise function? We notate the piecewise function in this manner. f of x is equal to function 1 if x is in domain 1. f of x is equal to function 2 if x is in domain 2. f of x is equal to function 3 if x is in domain 3. Para mas maintindihan natin, let's have an example. For example, f of x is equal to x plus 3 if x is greater than 6, 2x if x is less than or equal to 1, and x minus 2 if x is equal to 0. Sa halimbawang ito, ang ginamit na function name ay letter f. Ang ating domain o input, which is also called the independent variable, ay represented ng letter x. Itong ating halimbawa ay may tatlong functions or formula na ginamit. At ang lahat ng ito ay defined uniquely for the three intervals. Ang intervals na ito ay x is greater than 6, x is less than or equal to 1, and x is equal to 0. How to read piecewise functions? We can interpret the piecewise function by looking at the given intervals. If we take a look at our example, we can read it as when x is greater than 6, we are going to use x plus 3. When x is less than or equal to 1, we are going to use the function f of x is equal to 2x. When x is equal to 0, then we are going to use the function f of x is equal to x minus 2. This time, Let's go ahead and learn how we can represent real-life situations using piecewise functions. When representing real-life situations using piecewise functions, these are the important things to remember. 1. Identify the intervals for which different rules apply. 2. Determine formulas that describe how to calculate an output from an input in each interval. And 3. Use braces and if statements to write the function. For example, a video hockey machine can be rented 1,000 pesos for 3 days. On the 4th day onwards, 400 pesos will be added per day. Represent the cost of renting a video hockey machine as a piecewise function of the number of days D it is rented. For our solution, first, let us identify what is being asked in the problem. The problem asked us to represent the cost of renting a video hockey machine as a piecewise function of the number of days D it is rented. What is given? The rent of video hockey machine cost 1,000 for 3 days. 400 pesos per day will be added on the 4th day onwards on top of 1,000 pesos. Next, what operation to be used? We will use addition because an additional fee will be charged kung more than 3 days gagamitin ang video hockey machine. Para malaman naman kung ilang days ang ilinampas sa paggamit ng machine, we will use subtraction. 
and multiplication also para malaman natin kung ilan ang total charges. Write the number sentence. First, let us identify or define the independent and dependent variable. For the independent variable, let D be the total number of days the video Videoaki machine is used. And for our dependent variable, let f of d be the total cost of renting a video Videoaki machine. Now, now, let us identify the intervals for which different rules apply. Ilang intervals ba ang gagamitin para sa problem na ito? Balikan natin yung ating kasagutan sa step number 2. Sa step number 2, we have identified na isa sa mga given ay 1,000 pesos na kung saan ito ang rental fee for 3 days. Ang ibig sabihin nito, kahit 2 days or 1 day lang ginamit yung ating machine, 1,000 pesos pa rin yung ating babayaran. So yung ating interval will be D is less than or equal to 3 but greater than 0. Ang ibig sabihin nito, yung value ni D unang ating domain ay hindi lalampas sa 3 Pero hindi naman bababa sa zero. Yung ating second na given ay additional 400 pesos per day on the fourth day onwards on top of 1,000 pesos. So ano yung ating magiging interval? So sabi dito, magkakaroon ng additional fee ng 400 pesos kung lalampas sa 3 days. Therefore, yung ating interval ay D is greater than 3. Na-identify na mga intervals. Ang susunod na gagawin ay gumawa ng mga formula na gagamitin natin to calculate an output from an input in each interval. So, gamitin natin reference yung mga intervals. Para sa unang interval na D is less than or equal to 3 but greater than 0, ang ibig sabihin nito, ang video okay machine ay gagamitin ng hindi lalampas sa tatlong araw pero hindi naman bababa sa 0. So, ilan yung babayaran ng customer? Based sa problem, ang babayaran ay 1,000 pesos only kahit na 2 days lang or 1 day lang ginamit. So, paano naman kung lumampas sa tatlong araw? Sabi sa problem, may additional fee na 400 pesos per day. So, yung ating formula will be 1,000 plus 400 times D minus 3. Ang 1,000, ito yung minimum fee. Yung 400 times D minus 3, ito yung gagamitin to identify kung ilan yung additional charge. Halimbawa, ginamit yung ating video okay machine ng 5 days. So, yung value ng D ay 5. I-substitute natin, so magiging 5 minus 3. 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 times 400, 800 plus 1,000. So, ang babayaran ay 1,800 pesos. So, may intervals na tayo at may formula na din tayo. So, ang ating final answer will be F of D is equal to 1,000 if D is less than or equal to 3 but greater than 0. And F of D is equal to 1,000 plus 400 times D minus 3 if D is greater than 3. Now, how it will work? Halimbawa, ang value ng D ay 2. Alin sa dalawang functions ang gagamitin? Tingnan ang interval. Sa anong interval included ang value na 2? Since 2 is less than 3, sa unang interval. Kaya ang first function ang gagamitin. So, that's all for this episode. Maraming salamat po sa panunood. Don't forget to like and subscribe.